Good morning, friends. It is a joy to be together this morning. And I know as people are continuing to come in, um, that we are joyfully um, making space and, and practicing our welcome that we get to greet one another with each and every Sunday morning. I am Amelia Richardson Dress. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it is an honor to get to be the one who welcomes you this morning, along with our music staff, uh, our nursery staff, Alyssa, who is our Sunday morning building stuff. And some of you have already been greeted by her as you came in. And we also have our fantastic volunteers on AV this morning. And so on behalf of all of those people, Welcome to this space. This is a community where we are practicing being a community of hope. We are learning together what it means to follow Jesus and to walk the path that Jesus walked, which is a path of prayer and of action. And so this morning as we gather, I invite you first to greet one another using the words that are printed in your bulletin saying no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Take a moment and you might put your hand on your heart this morning. And maybe also if it's comfortable for you, put a hand towards your back. And notice the way that the breath comes in and out from those spaces, and we're just going to hold that space for a moment together. Christian tradition reminds us that God is as present to us as our breath, and that the Spirit itself is often described as being breath. So whatever this upcoming week holds for you, whatever, in fact, this service holds for you, know that you can return to that breath at any moment, and that with that incoming and outgoing breath, God's presence might be known to you a new way. With that in mind, let us rise in spirit and sing our first hymn for bringing in the light, which is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Gentleness flow through the wind. 
I'm wondering how many people learned a new thing this week. I won't call on you and ask you what you learned. So if you learned a new thing but you don't want to raise your hand because you're afraid that you'll have to answer what you learned, you won't. (laughs) Last week when we did the bell, or two weeks ago when we did the bell ringing outside, there were several folks who have been part of this congregation for such a long time who said, I have never rang that bell before. Did anybody ring the bell for the first time a couple weeks ago? Yeah. And then this week we had uh, kids go back to school in the St. Vrain Valley School District who went back to school this week. Yes. And teachers, are any of our teachers are here who also were welcoming kids back this week in classrooms. It was a busy week for our school district. And today we get to bless our teachers and our learners and our school support staff of all kinds. And we call it the blessing of the backpacks. And uh, we invite you to bring your backpacks or your work bags. And if you didn't get to bring them this morning, then this blessing will extend to whatever space they are living at while we are doing this. So I'm going to invite um, any of our teachers and our students of all kinds to come join me here, um, if you're comfortable doing that. And this is um, so that the congregation can turn a little bit and face you, but you will not have to do anything very weird. I know I see a lot of hesitation, like, do I have to go right there? So maybe our teachers can come first. Retired teachers, absolutely. We are blessing all teachers and all learners right now. Thank you, Teddy, for um, coming forward. (laughs) If it's easy for you to get through where Lauren is, or you can come this way. This is fine. This is great. Yeah, come on over here. All right. What a gift to get to bless you all today. We remember how much time Jesus spent teaching and learning alongside with each other, with his followers. Um, And so it's in that spirit that we get to offer this prayer to all of you. And so if the congregation, if it's comfortable for you to rise or rise in spirit while we pray, we will um, join them in this standing posture. And we're going to use the words that are printed in the bulletin. You might want to take a position of blessing. You can hold your hands forward or out like this. And for those of who are up here, if you want to receive that blessing with your hands this way and just hear the words that the congregation offers to you today, will you all join with me? Loving God, be with students, teachers, administrators, custodians, cooks, and all who teach and learn this year. May their minds and their pencils be sharp. May their lunches never be forgotten at home. And may their pink pearl erasers help them to remember that mistakes are okay. God of wisdom, bless first-time students, adult students, and the teachers who walk alongside them. Keep them safe, fill them with curiosity, 
and give them courage to let their light shine. We pray this and everything in the name of Jesus, who learned and taught all through his life. Amen. A yay, yes, I hear yays. Yays are always an appropriate response to blessings. <laughs> we do have children's church this week. Uh, Christina Edstrom is leading that, and so if you would like to join for Children's Church, you can meet her uh, right there. Kids are always welcome in the sanctuary as well. So if you prefer to be at the back with the coloring table, that is available for you, and there is a staffed nursery in the room right back in the corner. The kids do return here to the sanctuary before the end of the service to make it easy to reconnect with their grown-ups. And we will turn to our scripture reading. The Lord himself created wisdom. He saw her and appointed her. He poured her out upon all his works. She dwells with all flesh according to his gift, and he supplied her to those who love him. Good morning. My name is Jenny Witcher, my pronouns are she, her, and I am a minister at Juniper Formation UCC, which is a new church start in the United Church of Christ, mostly out of Denver, <laughs> but also we're digital, so everywhere. <laughs> um, we have members from all over the country and uh, occasionally outside of the country. And something, our, so our uh, mission is prophetically reimagining the church from the margins which means centering those voices and interpretations of scripture by those who have usually been kept out of the center or of paid leadership of the church. Uh, our leaders have all kinds of diversities uh, in terms of race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexuality, disability, neurodiversity. Um, I know I'm missing something because I started to list it. Uh, socioeconomic background, but all kinds of diversities. And that gives us kind of a unique lens on scripture and church. And we also take our mission not just for ourselves, prophetically reimagining church, but we do that with others. So part of my work, we don't meet on Sunday mornings, so that's why I can be here. <laughs> but part of my ministry is working with other congregations. I'm just here today um, to preach. But I work with other churches on rebirth, uh, transitions, all kinds of building new ministries, starting a community ministry. So that is just a little bit about me in my background. I want to start by rereading the scripture. It's from Sirach, uh, which is probably a book of the Bible a lot of us don't know because it's in what's called the Apocrypha, uh, which is a series of six books um, that the Protestant church didn't like so much, right? <laughs> The Catholic and the Orthodox Church includes them in their Bible. Protestants don't, although it's interesting is that in recent years, if you see some Protestant Bibles, and you may not have known there was a difference between Protestant and Catholic Bibles, there is, but some of the Protestant uh, translations are bringing the Apocrypha back in. So there's an interesting transition. I'm curious why, because a lot of the Apocrypha is about the Holy Spirit, but it's couched in the term wisdom because those early Christians and Jewish people, called Gnostics, used Greek uh, culture, and they used spirituality, and they were very much focused on the spirit or wisdom, and defined it in a certain way that for us would be spirit, whereas wisdom today is a little bit different, how I think we popularly understand it as a form of intelligence uh, gathered over kind of experience in time. So I'll reread the scripture with the word spirit. It is God who created the spirit. God saw the spirit and took the spirit's measure. 
God poured the Spirit out upon all of God's works, upon all of the living, according to their gifts. God lavished the Spirit upon those who love God. God, Love of God is glorious Spirit. To those to whom God appears, God apportions the Spirit that they may see God. So I chose this scripture to connect with your summer theme on call, to invite us to consider our call together in a new way as a congregation with a new senior pastor, who you know, but you don't know like this, and a new forthcoming associate pastor. Even though there will be days where it feels the same, it will be different. You'll be learning a new way of being together and of being church. So this book, Sirach, um, it's six poems about the search for wisdom. How do we find, have anyone ever had that, like, how do I get to God? (laughs) If God would only show up, (laughs) that would be so helpful. Yeah. So that's what they're writing about is, well, how do we get in touch with this Holy Spirit? How do we really get in touch with God? In a Gnostic tradition, wisdom, or Sophia, is simultaneously equivalent to the human soul, an emanation of God, the feminine pairing of Jesus. So if you think of the Trinity as, um, you may not, how I think of it, as God as like all gendered or non-gendered, Jesus, who we are told is male, although some theologians will critique that, the Holy Spirit has been defined as feminine in terms of what pronouns are used. So that's what they mean by the pairing of the masculine feminine with Jesus. It is also the Holy Spirit within the Trinity, what wisdom meant for those early Christians. And those Gnostics prioritized personal spiritual experience in knowing over orthodoxy and ecclesiastical authority. So like over rules and really narrow definitions of what faith or different parts of faith or what God meant. And according to the teachings of Jesus, wisdom is the spirit of truth or the Holy Spirit that abides within all of us. See, the Holy Spirit brings together into loving relationship all of creation, humanity, God, and Christ. And when we abide in the Holy Spirit and seek the Spirit within relationship to one another, we experience that love and heart of God. We become in discernment as a way of being or knowing truth through the Holy Spirit. So we're going to spend some time trying to get to know the Holy Spirit today through relationship to one another. So this, we're going to do like a very short version and touch on something that is a bigger practice that I do with congregations when I work with them. And it is something that is used to deepen relationships within congregations, um, a practice that helps engage kind of the root causes of conflict, helps churches discern uh, when they're struggling whether it is time to end their ministry as they've known it or rebirth their ministry into something new. When churches are seeking to develop community relationships uh, for social justice or other types of community ministries. So it's a practice that's used in a lot of spaces. It is deceptively simple, and it is something that almost all of us don't practice enough. And I call it relational discernment. It comes sort of from the community organizing tradition of one-to-one relational meetings and then brings in the Christian tradition of when we seek the Holy Spirit in one another. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to pair off. I would love for you to pair off with someone you don't know or don't know really well. I get that some of this ask is going to be a little scary for some folks, and extroverts are going to be like, yes. (laughs) I don't have to sit here quietly anymore. Um, But trust that it will be a, a good experience. If for any reason uh, you don't want to move around the sanctuary right now, whether you're tired, uh, you have a disability or an injury, uh, whatever it is, if it just took everything you had to get here today, and this pew is where you will live for the next hour, 
that's okay. I'll just ask that you raise your hand and then ask everybody else to partner with those folks first and then pair off uh, in the congregation. So when you pair off, before we get there, we'll go through the kind of instructions. I want you to, you're gonna, so you're gonna do a very simple one-way communication, right? So one person's the listener and one person's the talker and then you'll switch. You have three minutes each. So you have three minutes to share while the other person listens and then we'll reverse it. I'll time it. I'll let you know when you have to switch. So when the first person starts to talk, or the listener maybe might say, tell me about your gifts and talents. So here are some ways to think about this. You don't have to answer all of these like a test. This is just like, here are some prompts that might get you thinking. Share a story about one of your gifts and talents for ministry. Share a story about a time someone noticed you and told you how much they valued your contributions and why did that mean so much to you. Talk about something you'd love to learn or participate in this church and why. Talk about something you'd love to lead at this church, whether it's a current or potentially new ministry of the church and why. You know, as you think about these questions, I want to unbound our thinking from ministry and church having to occur in this building, right? So think outside of that in terms of your life and how you operate in this world, how you treat others, what you do as ministry. So when you're paired, you have those three minutes to share. The other person will listen. At the end of the listening, so when you're listening, first of all, I want you to, this might feel different, <laughs> listen for the Holy Spirit. Don't listen to respond, which is a very U.S. American communication strategy, right? Like you're thinking of what I say next. You don't have to. There's one thing you have to do at the end. That's it. I'm going to tell you, and you can use my words or your own. I want you to listen for the Holy Spirit, which means look at the person's body language, their micro facial expressions, their tone for excitement, for energy, for curiosity. Listen for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, for that movement as they share with you. When they're done sharing, I'd like you to offer some kind of affirmation. Now, if you don't know this person at all and they're like, I'm really good at this, you should not be like, yes, I've seen that and you are. <laughs> but you can say, I'm really excited about that for this reason and I'd love to know how I can support you and encourage you. If you know the person a little bit or you've seen them from afar, you can say, I have seen this gift in you in X situation. I see why that's a gift of yours. So try to be a little descriptive and detailed if you can. If not, offer support. And that's it. It's pretty simple. But we don't take time to listen for God and one another. And it's not just the pastor's job to do that. <laughs> In case you're wondering. This is an invitation, this exercise, to this congregation to imagine a new call together with Pastor Amelia and your new associate pastor, which requires each of you to reflect and engage on your gifts and talents for ministry just as much as Pastor Amelia is doing that same thing in her transition to becoming senior pastor. All right, so... If there's anyone that does not want to move, would you mind raising your hand so we can have someone pair off with you? Okay. Is there someone that does not know you that wants to come over and pair off? You're all going to have to get up otherwise. And then start to pair off. And once you're in pairs, I'll start the time for you.
Okay. Just to double check, we're in pairs of two and not four. And sometimes that happens. <laughs> you just won't be able to get through it in a short amount of time. I will, yes, thank you. I'll repeat the questions. All right, again, you don't have to answer every question. These are just to get you thinking. Share a story about one of your gifts and talents for ministry. Share a story about a time someone noticed you and told you how much they valued your contributions. Why did that mean so much to you? Talk about something you'd love to learn or participate in at this church and why. Talk about something you'd love to lead at this church, whether it is a current or potentially new ministry, and why. Okay. If your mind is blank, that's okay. Just start talking. Usually something will come out in three, three minutes is longer than it sounds. All right, begin. You can switch directions in your conversation now.
endure. That is time. If you'll wrap up your sentence, and then you can stay where you are for a few more moments. Okay. How did that feel to share your gifts and talents with somebody else? You can respond out loud. Pretty good. Okay. Anything else? Thumb, two thumbs up. <laughs> Got to know somebody new. Did it, did it surprise you that what happened in six minutes? For some, some folks, yeah. Yeah. Good. Naturally started chatting. Good. Anyone else on how it felt? Yeah. You found what in common? Things you have in common. Yeah, good. It is amazing to hear people's life story. Yeah, yes, like, did I, what did I say? Life story. Or whatever else I said, story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. It's much easier to listen. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Good. You could hear her quiet passion for what she was talking about. All right. Yeah, okay, so in just a few minutes, you can learn about the depths of someone's spirituality more than you have years in sitting in pews next to each other. Shorthand version. Yeah. Someone over here is raising? Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Can, can I repeat that? Okay. Uh, so learning about someone new, so the person next to you is a retired minister, which was a surprise, <laughs> and then reflecting on your own brain injury and what you're still able to do and the tenderness of that. Thank you. Mm. And I'm a gardener at home, but he also was talking about the history of using and spending for social activities, and that's my feeling. Uh, yeah. I like all of the social activities. Yeah. And so we talked about maybe trying to combine the two and use that space. Um, Here you go. Great. <laughs> this is the advanced class. <laughs> so. <laughs> It usually takes a couple of meetings, or longer meetings. So between the two of you, one person has a passion and gift for gardening and maintains the garden outside. The other has a passion and gift for social events and activities. And so naturally, they talked about, well, what if we just combined our gifts and did something new? And then they also said, we're not committing to this in front of the entire congregation today, (laughs) but maybe next Sunday. Okay, so without telling someone, I'll get to it in a second, without telling anyone else's story without permission, so ask permission first, I'd love to hear from a couple of folks, what did you learn about yourselves and about the other person? And we'll start with you. You can answer either the first question or the next one. So sometimes we see other people's differences and think there couldn't possibly be a similarity, so we don't connect. So in this case, right, there's an age difference, there's a season of life difference with you being pregnant, having little kids. I have an eight-month-old, so I'm still postpartum, and I will say, not from you, but for me, I will say that season, this season of life, pregnancy and postpartum, is one of the most isolating experiences I've ever had and I had my first child during COVID. So like that was very isolating, but it still is after COVID. (laughs) And and then we further isolate ourselves, and whether you're pregnant or not, there's different seasons or experiences in life that cause us to withdraw, or we have to, to survive, that become so isolating, and we need connection with others for our own health and welfare, and for those of others. Um, so they and they were they're both busy people. So they talked about, all right. So in the future, how can we get involved? Right? You don't have to do everything all at once. There are seasons of rest. There are seasons where you need to focus on healing, on taking care of children, taking care of family. Okay. Any other learnings that folks want to share? Yeah, so when you're doing ministry, 
it brings you joy. Sometimes it doesn't. But it brings you a lot of joy. <laughs> and you're talking about, his face was lighting up when he was talking about what he had done. Yeah, thank you. All right. Any last comments? Okay, if you did not have an earth-shattering Holy Spirit moment today, try it again. <laughs> The, the more you practice, the better it gets, I guarantee it. I am originally from Massachusetts, um, and embarrassingly will say, so people think we're rude. What we are is private and not interested in getting to know new people. No. <laughs> but there is a different culture there. We're here, people uh, at West will say hello more regularly or have some kind of conversation than back east where life is more privatized than public. And if I can get really into relational meetings, then I'm pretty sure a lot of other people can too. <laughs> it literally, yeah. How I met my husband was realizing he was someone, not, actually it wasn't gendered, that is someone I would like to get to know. And I remember, this was a long time ago, uh, like 15 or 20 years ago. And I remember thinking, huh, that's a thought I don't remember having before. <laughs> it's, it's rough. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is a practice that has changed my life. It is a practice that helps congregations connect to their call and support one another in their calls to ministry. It is, like you saw in our advanced class here, a place where you can bring together gifts into something new that you hadn't imagined before. Uh, and I just encourage you during this time of transition to keep practicing one-to-ones, to reach out, to like challenge yourself, whatever it is, like one person a week, whether it's here or outside or both, um, or whatever you can do in the time that you have to try and sit down and just listen to where God is moving in someone's life what's energizing them, what do they love. So many of us are not living in that space right now. There is a lot that is burdening people. People are tired. It feels like uh, nothing is going right in the world some days. So incorporating this practice into your life will be life-giving and healing for you as well as the people you talk to. Now, just now, what you did was practice sharing your gifts and talents. That's one of the hardest things to do. It is really hard to know what you're good at, because if you're good at it, you expect, like, everybody else is good at it, right? Just anyone else? Is it just me? I'm like, well, obviously, people know how to do this stuff, right? Yeah. So what's really the best thing, one of the greatest gifts that you can give anyone, is to name God in them. So as you move into the season of transition, remember to tell one another and your pastors when you see their gifts and talents shining, when you see that the Spirit of God is moving through them, and when you are grateful for how they share their gifts with this congregation, the community, their family, and their friends. Name God in your relationships, and you'll see what God can do. Amen. If you would please rise as you're able to sing the stars and planets flung into orbit.
like to invite us into a time of prayer. And today, as we focus on this transition of your pastors, I'd like to invite us to offer prayers of gratitude for this congregation and for your pastor, Amelia. I'm assuming you don't know the associate well enough to say a lot there, but you can. So for example, you might say, I give prayers of gratitude for this generosity of this congregation. Anytime someone needs something, we show up for them. Or you might say, I give prayers of gratitude for Pastor Amelia's creativity, which brings me back to church every Sunday, because I know I can expect something new and energizing. Now you can say the things I said in your own words too. I didn't just take them. They're not checkmarked. So I invite you to offer those prayers of gratitude that you have today. Sorry, out loud, I offer you... (laughs) This is the fun part about preaching in a different congregation because you don't know how people respond to prompts. So now that you've had some time to offer those to God yourself, if you would share those of the congregation with God. Prayers of gratitude for connection in the many ways, bazillion ways, that you've been connected to people over the years. Mm-hmm. Prayers of gratitude for a safe space. And the leaders who support it. Prayers of gratitude for the reminder to listen for the Holy Spirit. The physical part of worship. (laughs) Prayers of gratitude that if you can make it three more days, you make it to 80. And no one thought you could make it to 21. That's, that's pretty good. Happy birthday. Any other gratitudes or appreciations? Yes. I would like to say that I'm grateful to Reverend Amelia for reminding me to breathe every week because somehow every week I have forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Prayers of gratitude for Pastor Amelia for reminding us to breathe every week because for some reason, when we show up, we forget. Yes? Mm-hmm. Prayers of gratitude to Amelia for all her many gifts of working with children and youth. Yes. Ah, good. Clairvoyance. Prayers of gratitude, <laughs> Pastor Amelia, because somehow the sermon connects every week. Appreciation for all the volunteers who do an awesome job. Someone over here. Ah. Okay. Prayers of gratitude for being told to ring the bell. Okay. Because she comes back wanting to know how this church is going to ring its bell. With curiosity. Over here? <laughs> yeah. I have one. Prayers of gratitude for all the leaders in this congregation. Some of them don't necessarily want to be leaders, <laughs> but who are called forward anyway and rise to the occasion. Good. 
Prayers of gratitude for all the leaders in this church, and even those who don't want to lead, but agree to do it anyway. Sometimes it's tough being in charge of stuff. All right. I'm going to pray and then invite you to join me in the prayer of Jesus printed in your bulletin. Creator God, we come with hearts full of gratitude and also perhaps a little uncertainty about what transition brings. We promise to focus on what is good and what is right and loving and kind and just, to be reminded of all the gifts and talents we have and to use those to serve our community, our families, and our church. We pray together saying, our parent who is among us, blessed be your creation. May your reign be a reality here on earth. May we become more interested in building your kingdom here and now than in waiting for it to come down from above. Let us share our bread with those who hunger. Let us learn to forgive as well as to receive forgiveness. Help us through the time of temptation, delivering us from all evil. For ours are the eternal blessings that you pour upon the earth. Amen. Much has been offered into this space this morning, and it is a reminder that when Jesus taught his followers, his disciples, to go out into the world and be people of peace, he also taught them to be people of peace within themselves. And so this morning, in preparation for the many ways that we have heard that people uh, work towards being people of peace, we're going to return to that breath that we started with. And so if you forgot to breathe at some point in this past time, this is your reminder. And you might even return to uh, placing your hand somewhere in your body where you can notice that breath. And we're just going to spend this moment here again in this community of peace. As you are here, may you be out in the world. Hello, there we go, Good, perfect. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Phyllis Rosticus, and my pronouns are she, he, they. I serve on our church council, and it is good to be together this morning. A very special welcome this morning to visitors and guests, and welcome back to those who haven't been here for a while. We're so very glad you're here. Join us today in the Art Lounge after worship today for a church directory photo session with Karen Folgate. There she is. Let's capture those radiant smiles. You can also find other announcements in Happenings and the Bulletin to keep you connected. And if you'd like to support UCC Longmont financially, you can give online at ucclongmont.org giving or using the offering boxes at the back, on the back wall of the sanctuary. We're grateful for all your generosity. So thank you all. And while I know there isn't a church-sponsored walk this week, Tanya Ambrose, John, and I will be walking at 9 a.m. on Wednesday at Pella Crossing. Everyone who wishes to join us is welcome. Hope you all enjoy this week as we ease from the heat of summer into fall.
You will have noticed that you had many pieces of paper handed to you with your bulletin this morning, and one of those is a hymn that Lauren is going to help us learn here in a moment, but the other one of those is a paper that looks like this. It says UCC Longmont Demographic Survey on it. Um, if you are newer to the congregation, you have picked up that we are in the middle of some pastoral transitions. If you have been able to be with us for a bit, you know that we're in the middle of um, a search process as we begin looking for a long-term settled uh, second pastor position. One of the things that the UCC asks from us is that we give some information about the people who are here as part of the congregation. And so we have this survey for you um, to fill out here maybe today if you're able to take a few minutes after the service and fill that out. We'll have it available the next couple weeks as well. Um, and there are tables in the back that have been labeled for you just to set those on as you leave. If you are joining us online, we would love to have you fill it out as well. And you can just email me. My contact information is everywhere. You can email profile at ucclongmont.org, and we will be sure to send one of these to you. Let us rise in spirit, and using the insert in our bulletin, we will sing As You Go On Your Way. The choir and I will sing it one time through, and then please join us for two times afterwards. And now, as you go on your way, take care, take care. The love, all the love that you seek is here, is there. Love flows through your words and deeds. Love knows all the things we need. Love grows as our hearts are free from hatred, fear, and pain. Take care as you go on your way until we meet again. And now. As you go on your way, take care, take care. The love, all the love that you see is there, is there. Love flows through your words and deeds. Love knows all the things we need. Love grows as our hearts are free. From hatred, fear, and pain. Take care as you go on your way until we meet again. And now, as you go on your way, take care, take care. The love, all the love that you see. a special anointing oil for this season of transition and I'll tell you what's in it because it has meaning but also for allergy reasons. Uh, the base is olive oil which is oil that's been used since the time of Jesus to offer blessing and anointing. There's also jojoba oil in it which helps us absorb the oils into our skin. There is Utah juniper, and juniper tree has been used for indigenous peoples for centuries to open the respiratory system. So if you ever get to a juniper tree and touch the leaves, it smells a little menthol-y. That's why. Uh, and in our tradition, in Hebrew ruach, 
means breath, Holy Spirit. So it's an invitation to breathe in the Holy Spirit. There's also frankincense and myrrh as the gifts that were offered by the Magi to the newborn Jesus as the original blessing for new birth, for new communities of faith. And finally, there's Rose Otto, which is a heartwarming um, smell that is familiar to many of us uh, in our lives, is that just the beauty and warmth of the rose. So I'm going to offer anointing to Amelia, and then we will meet you at the back. If you'd like anointing on the way out, you can tell us if you want your forehead. If you want to smell it throughout the day, you could do your wrist over your veins or the back of your hand. If you don't want oil, you can ask for a blessing with that oil as well. And this is our benediction that we offer to you today. Amelia, I anoint you as senior pastor of this congregation. May your creativity be unbound. May it not be fleeting, but be central in who you are as a pastor. May you continue to be loving and kind, and may this congregation love and care for you in return. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, friends.